Welcome back to another YouTube video. It's your girl Chrissy Cello here and in today's YouTube video I have probably put the ultimate pressure on myself. Judging from the title, it's my responsibility now to give you the only abs video you will ever need. You guys already know, I try and keep my YouTube super simple, super efficient, so you're left feeling less overwhelmed about your fitness journey than maybe when you first clicked onto this video. There are so many videos regarding abs. There could be one that you've watched and really enjoyed, so definitely stick to that. But I just hope that this YouTube video simplifies what abs and core means, how to train them, any myths that you might have heard, and just really simplifying it for you. So the first topic of conversation is the difference between core and abs. To make it simple, there's two different ways that you can think about your core and your abs. Your core is there as a stabilizing unit and also as a form of protection for your spine and your abs is more specific. If I was gonna make this even more simpler, I would consider your core as more of like those big compound moves that we always talk about and I would consider your abs as more of those isolation moves that we always talk about in our previous videos. So what I mean by that is your core is your main stabilizer. It is the trunk of your body. It keeps your spine protected. It helps you perform those big movements like squats and deadlifts. Your abs are much more specific and they have specific muscle groups as well, which we'll get into. Your abs make part of your core and they are located between your rib cage and your pelvis. Your abs will help you move in a more dynamic way. So think about a crunch, think about a twist. So this is when you're doing those forward crunches, those reverse crunches, those Russian twists. So it's working in more dynamic ways and the muscles are also traveling in more dynamic ways. So your core is more about stabilization, keeping you protective and also structured, whereas your abs work in a more dynamic way, working on those finer muscles. So now you understand the difference between core and abs. The next part I wanna go into is how to train them. Training your core is all about strengthening that core. Like I said, it's your stabilization. So the stronger that stabilization is, the more it will make even day-to-day -day movements super simpler and easier. It's your protective unit. So I want you to think resistance. The more resistance you add to it, the stronger it will get. So think big compound movements. Think about hollow holds, plank holds, dead bugs. These are all movements where that you are stabilizing your core in one area, holding onto that resistance, building that retention, so then you actually have a really strong unit. Whereas with abs, it's more about crunching, rotating, twisting. So think Russian twists, think reverse crunches, think actual crunches. And like I said, these are more visible. So when we talk about the core, you're not necessarily gonna see those visible abs, but it's important to train it. Whereas abs, it's more isolation and more specific and more visible. Those are the abs that everyone talks about, the abs that everybody sees, but you can't train one without the other because one is so important for general movement and general health and life, and one is arguably a little bit more aesthetic. Now we've gone through how to train your core and abs, what the difference between both is. It is so important that you know how to properly breathe when you are performing any core or abs exercises, simply on the basis that it will increase your performance. So if you're not breathing properly, you're probably not even engaging that muscle properly. And the second thing is it's gonna minimize risk because if you're holding your breath too much or if you're not breathing adequately, you're not gonna get enough oxygen in your body and you could feel faint, you could feel actually worse off. So it's really important that you know how to breathe. When it comes to breathing and training your abs or core, it's really simple. Inhale through your nose before you're even performing the movement or thinking about performing the movement. I want you to hold that air into your diaphragm. Imagine someone is about to punch you, that's how you're gonna tense your core. When you're performing the movement, that's when you're gonna exhale through your mouth and you're gonna repeat that motion over and over again every single rep. Now let's talk about abs myths. There are so many myths out there and probably without a failure of a doubt, whenever I'm doing a Q&A, whenever I am answering any questions regarding fitness, one of the most common asked question is, how do I get abs? I really want physical abs. People tend to think that if you do so many crunches in your bedroom and you're just sitting there and doing a thousand crunches a day, you're just gonna get abs. That's not necessarily the truth. You have to also consider that every single body has abs. Every single body has a core. 
it's about what's also visible and that comes down to body fat percentage and that is the facts if you have a higher body fat percentage it's going to be likely you're not going to see those visible abs as someone who has an incredibly lower body fat percentage this is no way me encouraging you to drop mass amounts of body fat percentage but i'm just giving you a little bit of advice that if you want more visible abs then body fat percentage is something you need to consider number two genetics plays such a big factor on how visible your abs are as well how they look and how they are also displayed and i think this is something that sometimes is often overlooked for example i do not have a visible six pack like somebody else does but my core in general is a little bit more smaller than maybe somebody else's everybody is just built different so just factor that in next time you are sat there comparing yourself just factor in that genetics is a big big thing another thing i want to discuss is that people think that women and men should be doing different ab workouts different core exercises and that is not the case you will need to train your core to strengthen your core in a resistance manner whether you are male or female you will need to do certain exercises such as a crunch or a twist or a reverse crunch whether you are a man or woman if you want to target your abs much much more so please get out of your head that if you are a woman you have to train your abs differently than if you are a man it is really important that you know that another thing that i want to discuss is that ab exercises injure your back hurt your back and hurt your neck no exercise in the world should hurt any part of your body if it's performed correctly that is facts and that's where form comes in and that's where breathing comes in and it's so important that you do less and focus on the quality of what you are doing rather than just doing a thousand crunches where you are going to compromise your form where you are going to compromise your breathing because you're just trying to get that rep range in so please understand that if any movement is causing you any injury that you've never had before or you are not prone to having before if you have a history with back injury neck injury that, that's a whole different topic but i'm just saying that really any exercise that you perform shouldn't necessarily be causing any pain there's a difference between a burn and there's a difference between pain but it shouldn't be causing you any pain or discomfort the next segment that we're going to be discussing is all about nutrition you can't talk about how to get abs you can't talk about how to train abs if you're not also going to discuss your nutrition side of things everybody always says abs are made in the kitchen and the reality is you need both the functional training and training your core and abs adequately and also the nutrition side of things they go hand in hand if you are going to the gym working really really hard but then you're not supplementing that workout with the right nutritional diet you are going to jeopardize what you've done in the gym and vice versa if you're just simply always eating well but never moving your body never strength training you're not going to see the results that you deserve to see so nutrition is a really big factor in general so like we said before being in a deficit is super important in order for you to see those visible abs but like i also said genetics plays a really big factor when it comes to being in a deficit you don't want to go completely on the other side of things and deprive yourself restrict yourself too much where it almost becomes impossible to live a life that you deserve to have my recommendation is if you are going to cut calories do it in a really gradual simple way do not just go into it and cut thousands of calories where you're barely eating nothing your body feels deprived and you can't even function day to day so please do it gradually the next thing we're going to discuss is protein protein is such a hot topic how much should you be eating how should your palate look to make it really simple i personally recommend having some sort of protein with every single meal that you have so whether that's chicken salmon whether that's beans or peas whatever you fancy and whatever you enjoy eating but definitely having some sort of protein in your meals is absolutely vital the other thing that i want you to consider is what processed foods that you are eating Processed food isn't just about fast food. It's also all the ingredients that are hidden into foods that you're just grabbing and going. So be mindful. For example, a bag of crisps could have all these ingredients that you don't understand, but you can opt for another bag of crisps that just has three ingredients, potatoes, oil, and salt, and that will be a better option. 
It's about being mindful and not just saying, I'm gonna stop everything, not eat any of the foods that I love. It's about doing those clever swap overs and being mindful of what you're putting into your body rather than just eliminating those foods or rather than just going for those foods. So figure out what choices that you can make that will be beneficial not only to your overall health, but see as we're talking about abs here and core, but also your abs. One thing I always used to do, especially when I first started my fitness journey, is I used to think the more cardio I do, the less I eat, the better I will look, the better I will feel. That's an equation for disaster, if I'm being honest. It's not sustainable, it will leave you unhappy, and also you can't live a life where you just think you, can, you should eliminate absolutely everything that does give you some sense of joy and happiness just to look a certain way. I found that the best thing I ever did was finding a structured routine that I can stick to that actually fits my schedule and my life. So now I train four to five times a week maximum, whereas before I used to train every single day and sometimes twice a day. I also eat the foods that genuinely bring me happiness, but also are really replenishing my body, which is really important. So please avoid skipping meals. Please avoid skipping enjoyable times and it's all about being mindful it's all about making smart choices and it's genuinely about you figuring out what's sustainable in your life so don't skip your meals have your protein stay hydrated do not do excessive amounts of cardio or excessive amounts of working out because it could also as a woman have a massive side effect to your hormones and your cycle which is something you don't want so this video is to educate you, but this video is also to be a reminder that you don't have to do these extreme things and extreme measures to get the results that you want. It's also about consistency and staying as consistent as possible and being smart with the way that you work out rather than doing so much and feeling actually worse. I hope you found this video useful, but I have one more surprise for you that I think you're absolutely gonna love. I'm so excited to announce that I am launching my very own abs and core challenge called Project Abs on the Evolve You app. This is a 14 day on demand abs challenge. That means you get to press play and I'm gonna be with you every single step of the day. There's no equipment needed. You can do it in the comfort of your own home. We're gonna be working on that core, working on those abs together. And I really just hope I make you feel stronger than ever before. Beginners are welcome all the way to advance. There's alternatives for absolutely everyone. And as a special little treat, I'm actually gonna show you what day one looks like so you can actually do it with me right now. I hope you enjoy and make sure that you subscribe to the Evolve You app so you can get exclusive access to Project Abs, the 14 day abs challenge. Welcome to Project Abs, your 14 day abs challenge here on the Evolve You app. I'm your trainer, Chrissy Chella, and I'm gonna make you absolutely love this abs challenge because you're gonna see results, you're gonna feel so much more confident, and you're not gonna be alone doing this. I'm gonna be with you every single step of the way. Although this is classified as a 14 day abs challenge, we actually have five abs challenges per week. So week one will consist of five abs challenges and circuits, and then also week two. You will have two rest days where you can rest and recover. It depends completely up to you when you wanna do them and when you wanna schedule them into your Evolve You workout planner. So I'm gonna go easier on you as it's day one, but you're still gonna feel it and you're gonna feel super proud of yourself. No equipment is required for the whole abs challenge and the whole 14 day abs challenge. So meet me on the mat and let's start. So the first thing that we're gonna do, single leg raises. So pop your back on the mat securely and safely. Position your hips securely onto the mat as well. So I don't want any bridge because that's gonna cause a lot of lower back injury. So simply tilt your coccyx bone, secure your back on the mat, raise both legs and we're gonna put one leg down at a time like so. So you're gonna give me 20 reps, 10 reps to total from each leg. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Breathe in each time. You've got this, nearly there, halfway. 10, 
Nine, stay with me. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one more. From there, you're gonna place your head on the mat, bringing your hands underneath your glutes. You're gonna give me 12 double leg leg raises. So your legs together, bringing them down, not touching the mat, and then bringing them back up. In three, two, one, let's go. One, two. If you feel, keep going and just listen to the sound of my voice. If you feel your back arching off the floor, just slow it down and don't go all the way down. So just bring it to about here and then come back up. Keep going for me, we're nearly there. Give me five, four, three, Two, and one more. Good job, gosh, that burn. From there, you're gonna bring your hands behind your head, and you're gonna give me a bicycle. So simply crossing over opposite elbow to opposite knee, that back securely on the floor. We're gonna do a total of 12 reps, so that is six reps on each side. Going in three, two, one, let's go. One, good job, crossing over. Try and bring your upper body as high as you can so you can really feel it into your core instead of your lower back. Good job, halfway. Six, five, four, slow it down. Three, two, and one. Staying on the mat, but raising your legs up. So I'm gonna give you an alternative to this movement as well if you cannot do it. We're gonna be doing toe taps. Simply raise your legs in front of you and you're gonna tap your toes like so. If that's just too intense, bend your knees and just tap, tap, tap like so. Challenge, your, challenge yourself, but if it's too much, just bend your knees. We're going in three, two, one, for 12 reps. One, two, three, good job. Four, five, oh my gosh, I'm feeling it. Stay with me. Eight, nearly there, four more, four, three, two, and one, good job. I'm gonna give you now a 20 to 30 second rest. We're gonna repeat that entire circuit one more time. If you find a movement to be too difficult or too challenging, slow it down, go at your own pace, pause the video, repeat the movement, see where it feels right. None of the exercises should be felt in your lower back, but if they do, my recommendation is to really just slow your movements down. There's no rush, go at your own pace. This is just two rounds, we're nearly there. Super quick and efficient. Are you ready? Lowering yourself on the mat. We're gonna repeat that entire circuit again. Getting comfortable in five, four, three, two, one. Single leg raises. Remember, we're doing 10 reps each leg here. Good job, stay with me. Slowing it down or speeding it up at your own pace. Breathing with every single movement. Breathe and breathe, good job. Eight, nine, ten. Two more. I lie, we have ten more. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Keep going, keep going. This is where I get overly excited and I think the movement is nearly done and I'm like, oh my gosh, no. Wait, girl, you've got ten more reps. Keep going. And five, four, three, stay with me, two, and one more. From there, double leg raises. Plant your hands onto your glutes, and let's go. One, two, three, nearly there. Four, five, stay with me. Six, now I'm gonna feel it. Seven, okay, this is burning. Eight, give me four more, four. Nearly there, three, two, stay with me, one more. One, good job. 
relaxing for a bit. We're gonna bring our hands behind our head straight into a bicycle. Let's go. Crunching over opposite elbow to opposite knee. Three, four, five, six, halfway, seven, eight, nine, 10. Give me two more. And 12. Extending your legs up in front of you so you can see them all bending your knees. We're going to go straight into toe taps. But this time, you're not going to give me 12. You're actually going to give me 15. So I'm going to challenge you already. In three, two, one. Let's get it. One, two, three, four, five. Give me 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, stay with me. Four, stay with me. Three, two, and one. Relax, you are done. That was day one. I know I said I'll keep it a little bit chilled, so if that was too intense, like I said, go at your own pace. All of the abs challenges will require no equipment. Your body is enough for you to build a strong core and really engage those abs. I hope you enjoyed day one. I cannot wait to see you in day two. If you wanna repeat this one or you wanna make it more intense, throw in another round or if you wanna simplify it, just do one round. Really do go at your own pace. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow for day two of Project Abs. So there you have it, day one. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, there's a 30% discount code on the Evolve You app if you use code Chrissy30. At checkout, you can use it and get a discount. I just hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it motivated you to get up and go do something for yourself. And best of all, training your core and training your abs is super important for your overall health, your overall stabilization and simple day-to-day -day movements. So there we have it. I hope this video has been useful and helpful. If it has, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and just let me know which part you found helpful. Like always, I love you always and forever, and I'll see you next time.